Every summer, humans around the world casually step into the ocean for a swim. But you might not after you see these videos. There's a lot more out there than friendly sea critters beneath those waves. Even worse, we've only explored a small percentage of our planet's oceans. That means there could be more scary sea creatures here than we thought. Can you imagine what else might be lurking in the deep sea? You might be too scared to ever go in the water again after watching this. 15 Most Terrifying Monsters Found in the Deep Sea Part 2 Monkfish It's fair to conclude that it's one of the scariest creatures swimming around in the ocean. Meet the monkfish. Monkfish is the name given to these creatures by North Sea Fishermen, a sea in the northern part of Europe. In other parts of the world, this type of fish is sometimes referred to as the poor man's lobster, fishing frogs, frogfish, goosefish, and even deep sea devils. They certainly look the part. Monkfish have large, broad heads which are flat and depressed. The remainder of the body of this species is mere appendage to the head. This fish species is found at the bottom of the sea. Its pectoral and ventral fins are formed so that they act as feet. This feature makes it possible for the fish to walk on the bottom of the sea. The monkfish body is made in such a way that it can conceal itself in its surroundings, waiting for its prey to come. Some species have three long filaments shooting out from the middle of its head. Out of these, the middle one acts like a radar which attracts prey towards it. The monkfish then seizes them and devours them completely with the help of the long pointed teeth which are inclined inwards. There are various species of Lophidae anglerfish found in the North Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean, the North Sea, and the Mediterranean Sea as well. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. When you pull something out of the ocean like this, two mysterious brown blobs, it must be for good reason and not just the spirit of discovery. The findings must be significant enough that it required a half dozen medical professionals to handle them. We're guessing they're getting ready to dissect these egg-shaped deep-sea creatures. But what they're looking at to find is the real mystery. On one hand, we're thinking that it could be some sort of new species of ocean creature that these medical professionals need to see inside to understand their purpose and how they function. On the other hand, maybe these are actually eggs to some sort of unborn being, even alien in origin. And what's inside could be even more unexpected than we could fathom. But that's just our imagination running away. There could be a very logical explanation behind this so-called terrifying monster found in the deep sea. Any guesses? The possibilities are endless. So tell us what you think in the comments below and use the hashtag sweet topic when you do. Black Swallower Its most notable attribute is its large mouth. It's officially known as the gopher eel and it's one of the most bizarre looking creatures in the deep sea. The gopher eel also has a very long whip-like tail. Specimens that have been brought to the surface in fishing nets have been known to have their long tails tied into several knots. The eel uses its long tail for movement. The end of the tail is tipped with a light producing organ known as a photophore. Through a process known as bioluminescence, the photophore glows pink and can give off occasional red flashes. Since the eel's body is not built for chasing prey, it's believed that the eel uses this light as a fishing lure to attract fish and other creatures close to its enormous mouth. When the prey is in range, the eel lunges and snaps it up in its gigantic mouth. This enormous mouth is much larger than the eel's body. The mouth is loosely hinged and can be opened wide enough to swallow an animal much larger than itself. The hapless fish is then deposited into a pouch-like lower jaw, which resembles that of a pelican. In fact, this eel is sometimes referred to as the pelican eel. The gulper eel's stomach can also stretch to accommodate its large meals. Wolffish Although they can occasionally be found in shallow water, the wolffish is more frequently seen below 60 feet, lying with their heads protruding from holes. It's a strong elongated fish with an unforgettable grin. The name of this species comes from their teeth which resemble those of a wolf. They have four to six prominent fang-like teeth at the front of their mouth, with several rows of burnt, crushing teeth further back. Its teeth are used for smashing up shellfish and sea urchins, and the whole of the inside of the mouth is made up of grinding molars, aka no chance of escape. Their large head, 
powerful jaws and large canine teeth are all used to hunt and eat hard-bodied or spiny invertebrates, such as crabs and large marine snails. And make no mistake, wolffish are unstoppable predators. Despite their appearance, Atlantic wolffish are not dangerous to humans and are thought to be shy and reclusive creatures. These fish are restricted to the cold waters of the North Atlantic Ocean, and their blood contains several natural compounds that prevent it from freezing in such frigid temperatures. They're usually solitary fish, although, as they're not territorial, rocky areas containing a large number of suitable hiding places may contain several wolf fish. <laughs> Zombie worms These 1-3 to three inch Osidax worms were first discovered living in the bones of a riding gray whale on the deep sea floor, nearly 10,000 feet deep in 2002. Zombie worms don't crave brains, instead they seek bones. They're best known for extracting some of the final nutrients from whale skeletons fallen to the deep. They don't discriminate among bones. They've also been found on fish bones and have colonized cow bones dumped from a ship. They hold on to whatever bones they can find by drilling in with their roots, which contain the symbiotic bacteria. Feathery plumes splay from the other end of their bodies, which act as gills to extract oxygen from the seawater. Zombie worms can retract these plumes into the body when they're disturbed. The worms don't eat mineral bones directly, instead they digest fats within the bone. However, their style of eating is quite different from ours because they don't have a mouth or a stomach. They secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves bone, freeing up that fat and protein trapped inside. Then, symbiotic bacteria living in the worms' bodies digest the fat and proteins. If all this isn't strange enough, the only worms doing any drilling are female. The microscopic males live inside their bodies. <laughs> Mystery Spear Hunter You're not gonna believe this footage. It shows a fish being hunted with a spear by a mystery figure. But at over 2,000 feet, it would be almost impossible to successfully hunt in these waters. So, what's doing the hunting? Could there be a fish hunter this far beneath the waves that uses a spear to secure a meal? Like a spear hunting mer person? In European folklore, mer people were natural beings who, like fairies, had magical and prophetic powers. They loved music and often sang, luring sailors to their demise. Who knew they were also great at spear fishing? But is this the proof believers need to finally convince the world that spear hunting mermaids exist? Spear fishing isn't a sport that has strict depth rules. Since there are no guidelines about how deep a diver should go, it usually depends on a diver's ability and preference, but a human is not capable of spearfishing at depths like this. Additionally, the deeper you go, the higher the risk. With increased depth and pressure, the diver is more susceptible to oxygen toxicity because the body absorbs more oxygen. Oxygen toxicity can lead to life-threatening side effects, so the mystery spear hunter remains a mystery. <laughs> Goblin Shark There's still a lot of mystery surrounding the life of those terrifying animals, the spooky goblin shark. But we do know where they live. The goblin shark has been known to lurk 5,000 feet below the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. Its strange looks start with unusual coloring, from pinkish to purplish gray, with bright blue around its fins. The creature's muscles are flabby, its skeleton is mushy, and its weird skin is thin and transparent. It might not be a natural beauty, but still. The strangest feature of the goblin shark is its jaw. It can be extended to help ambush fish, squid, and crustaceans. The jaws shoot out, jutting forward at a whopping 10 feet per second, faster than any other shark. In fact, it's faster than most cobra snakes. At maximum extension, the jaws make up almost 10% of the shark's entire body length. That's a huge bite from a shark that grows to be over 10 feet long and researchers believe the goblin shark hunts its prey by exploring the electric fields deep in the ocean. Crazy, right? Lucky for us, the goblin shark is found in deep water and poses no threat to people. The species is found near the seafloor and marine waters to depths of about 3,000 feet. Just seeing one is scary enough. Viperfish There aren't any dentists in the deep sea but the advantages of having a mouth full of fangs like these are greater than you might think. There's little hope for escape from viperfish jaws. They overpower and swallow larger catches with the help of their large, muscled, hinged jaws and extremely long, needle-like teeth. 
The viperfish is thought to use these sharp teeth to impale its victims by swimming at them at high speeds. Angling back from the lower jaw, the teeth of the viperfish are so long that they don't fit in its mouth and can even poke its own eyes out if it closes its mouth entirely. You don't want to be hunted by this sea monster. They come heavily equipped with photophores, patches of bioluminescence extending along the back of their body. Also, it has a high concentration of photophores in its mouth and a long, thin lure that extends from its dorsal fin. The viperfish uses this light organ, flashing the light on and off to attract shrimp, plankton, and other small fish. The viperfish is a scream-inducing nightmare of a deep ocean fish and is found at depths up to 9,000 feet in tropical and temperate waters throughout the world. But fortunately, they're rarely seen by humans, but they're still scary. Anglerfish As we all know, the deep sea is full of alien-looking creatures, and this anglerfish is no exception. But observing an anglerfish in action, or really at all, is extremely difficult. There are only 14 dead specimens from this particular anglerfish species held at natural history museums throughout the world. And they're all female. Since anglerfish can't live in the lab, seeing them in their natural habitat is the only way to observe them. The toothy anglerfish, with its expandable stomach and glowing lure and fin rays, is notable not just for its weird looks, but also for its odd mating method, which has been captured in the wild on video for the first time. If you saw a male anglerfish and a female anglerfish together, you'd probably not recognize them as the same species. In fact, in the video below, you might not be able to find the male at all. The male anglerfish is lureless and teeny tiny, as much as 60 times smaller in length compared to his lovely lady. And he's kind of a deadbeat boyfriend. The male anglerfish attaches to the female's belly in a parasitic mating ritual that involves biting into her and latching on fusing with her so that he can get his nutrients straight from her blood. He stays there for the rest of his fishy life, fertilizes her eggs, and eventually becoming part of her body completely. <laughs> Squidworm The deep waters of the ocean may be the largest habitat for life on Earth, but they're also the least explored. The squidworm was discovered using a remotely operated underwater robot exploring the deep waters. Have you ever seen anything like it? This unusual free-swimming worm with squid-like limbs is one of a host of strange discoveries that await scientists in the vast, largely unexplored spaces of the ocean. It possesses 25 or more pairs of translucent white paddles arranged on its sides for swimming and up to 10 fragile tentacle-like appendages at its head that are the same length as its body or longer. The slimy animal's flattened body is about three and a half inches long. The creature is eyeless, too. It relies on frilly organs on its head for smell and what seems to be structures at the tips of its appendages specialized for touch or smell. Based on gut contents and videos of the squid worm, the researchers suspect that it feeds on marine snow, a type of rain that comes from the upper layer of the ocean, such as sinking plankton. A new anatomical and genetic analysis of the squid worm has revealed it to be a segmented worm, just like an earthworm but its appearance is far stranger. And although just one species of squid worm is known to date, scientists expect more to crop up soon. Sarcastic Fringehead Welcome to your nightmares, deep sea edition. But don't be too quick to judge. These creatures are fascinating. The Sarcastic Fringehead is a small fish, up to 12 inches, that lives off the coast of California in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. These fish will make homes out of just about anything shells, crevices in rock or clay, and even human trash like bottles and jars. But it's still a beast, as you can see. This fish has a series of needle-sharp teeth that it uses to bite into its prey. They challenge each other by opening their huge mouths and exposing their razor teeth to their rivals. But eventually, the smaller fringe head surrenders and leaves. The fringe head part of its name comes from the soft appendages that rise above its head. The defining personality trait of these fish is that they're aggressively territorial. They fight off anything that comes too close, no matter the size of the intruder. Known to be especially cranky, fringe heads charge at anything that comes close, including people. Many divers have reported being harassed by a grumpy fringe head after getting too close to its home. Plus, they're ambush predators, so they like to hide and then stake out prey in places that offer protection and an open view. Deep Blue 
This beast is the largest great white shark ever caught on camera by marine biologists and scientists. Deep Blue was initially identified in the 1990s. When this shark was discovered, it was 20 feet long, 8 feet wide, and weighed 2.5 tons, with razor-sharp teeth and huge fins. The unique thing about Deep Blue is that she's likely pregnant when discovered. However, images and footage of the largest great white shark on record in the world were only captured for the first time. A marine biologist was conducting research with his team when he found Deep Blue swimming around the boat. White sharks are infamous for being the most dangerous and aggressive sharks in the ocean. And though Deep Blue is the biggest great white known to man, she does not have an aggressive personality. There's video footage of her approaching a diver in a non-aggressive, somewhat curious manner, as well as being tolerant of other divers around her. One of the researchers even ended up having a close interaction with the queen of the ocean and even high-fived her. This massive great white shark is said to be around 50 years old and has an estimated life expectancy of around 70 years. Banded Sea Crate This spectacular sea snake's venom is very poisonous. It's 10 times more toxic than a rattlesnake's venom. They're solitary hunters. They do travel along with different hunting parties like bluefin and goldfish as it helps them catch fleeing prey. When they hunt, they paralyze their prey with their venom and then swallow it whole. The venom attacks the nervous system of the victim and can result in convulsions, paralysis, cardiac failure, and even death. Their smooth, streamlined body with a flattened paddle-shaped tail makes them skilled swimmers, allowing them to swim forwards and backwards and ambush their prey with a surprise attack. They prey on eels, which they can find when they slide through a reef's crevices. And after devouring an eel, the banded sea crate's next stop may be a comfortable spot to digest on land. It's the only kind of sea snake that's amphibious, and it can spend up to 10 days on land where it may digest its food, mate, or lay eggs. But try not to worry, banded sea crates are a docile species that spend most of the time foraging among the corals. This snake lives in the shallow, tropical waters of coral reefs and mangrove swamps in the eastern Indian and western Pacific Oceans. Frilled Shark This creature's common name comes from its gills. Unlike all other sharks, which have separate gills, the frilled shark's gills go all the way across its throat. Each pair is lined at the edges with a red fringe. No one has ever observed the frilled shark hunting, but scientists believe that it uses its posterior fins as propulsive devices, as propulsive surfaces to launch itself at prey. Its long jaws may allow the animal to take in prey half as long as its body, but the mouth is the most terrifying part of the deep sea shark. It's lined with 25 rows of backward-facing, trident-shaped teeth, 300 in total. There's little chance any prey could escape. On top of that, the shark uses its bright white teeth, which sharply contrast against its brown body, to lure in prey. But by the time the prey realizes they're too close, it's dinner time. Sometimes called a living fossil because it's changed so little since prehistoric times, the eel-like frilled shark is rarely seen by humans. This strange, prehistoric-looking shark lives in the open ocean and spends much of its time in deep, dark waters far below the sea surface. Bobbit Worm This astonishing creature typically attains an average length of roughly 39 inches, but individual specimens of the species occasionally grow to lengths of as much as 10 feet long. Despite its relatively great length, its width rarely exceeds an inch. Therefore, the vast majority of individuals studied have a decidedly slim shape. And yes, the bobbit worm is named after a very famous criminal investigation about a knife-wielding wife who sliced off a very significant part of her abusive husband's body. We'll leave it up to you to Google it. Having said that, its best-known physical feature obviously remains its incredibly powerful mandibles. These extremely overpowered features, the sea-dwelling terror uses with amazing efficiency. It attacks prey using its mouth parts, which are known for being razor sharp with surgical precision. Plus, the bobbit worm is one of the most notorious ambush predators in the ocean. It burrows its entire body in the ocean or seafloor's soft sediment. It has antenna that help it to detect prey. These features serve it quite well while it remains hidden. One fact stands out, however, that's the incredible speed it displays when attacking its prey. When it does, it strikes with such velocity that it often cuts its prey in half. Crown of Thorns 
These coral reef dwelling creatures are among some of the largest starfish species, up to three feet in diameter. A crown of thorns starfish looks like most starfish, having a central disc from which arms are extended. They have multiple soft arms, more than a typical five, that are covered in spines that make them unique. Their arms are also prehensile, which means they can grab onto things, but they're not great neighbors. One or two of these starfish on a reef may be beneficial for biological diversity as they keep down the growth of fast-growing coral and leave space for other slow-growing corals. However, as the starfish population multiplies or the starfish begin eating coral tissue faster, a devastating crown of thorn outbreak can occur. It can have devastating impacts of an entire coral reef. Healthy reefs can regenerate after these outbreaks within 10 to 20 years. However, weaker reefs take a longer time and cannot regenerate enough before the next outbreak hits. If you happen to come across one of these starfish, don't touch them. This can cause a severe sting pain, and swelling that can last for hours or even days. People who have an accidental run-in with a starfish years later can still feel part of the spine left in their skin. Since the deep sea is no place for humans to swim, there's almost no chance we'll have a run-in with any of these terrifying ocean monsters. And we're glad about that. If you are too, like and subscribe. More videos and more entertainment on the way.